What is going on, everybody? Canuck here, and welcome to the 2007 Canadian Baseball League playoffs here in Out of the Park 24. So we have made it into the playoffs. We have secured the final wild card spot with a decent season of 94 and 68. I mean, that's a pretty darn good season, I would say. However, in this stacked Rocky Mountain division, that is only good for third and the final wild card spot, which is absolutely crazy. Uh, so because of this, uh, unfortunately, we draw the Calgary bone pilers in round one. And this team is an absolute wagon. They're they're unbelievable. Like first, 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 tenth in defensive efficiency. But they're the best hitting team. They're the best pitching team. Uh, this is going to be very, very difficult, but. Uh, anything can happen in playoff baseball. You never know. But uh, for us, as you can see, we're a decent offensive team. Um, we definitely struggle on the defensive side of the ball for sure. Our pitching isn't bad, but uh, not definitely not as good as Calgary's. So uh, we're going to see what we can do here in round one. But uh, my my uh, expectations are pretty low here. So. Before we jump into the series, let's kind of just check in on how the team did. We were kind of in autopilot the last couple months just because it was pretty much assured we were going to land in the playoffs because we we cleared Victoria pretty quickly. Uh, it was just to see if we were going to lock down that set, the first wild card spot or the second. Edmonton finished a couple games ahead of us, so they have locked in the second spot and they will face Regina in the first round. Tail of the tape here. Well, actually not tail of the tape. Let's break down, like I said, our players here. And we'll start with George Bulger, who is, this is probably his last few games as a Vancouver Mountie. Um, you know, he's he's had some injury issues the last couple of seasons. Um, definitely his production has dropped. 264, six home runs, 40 walks. I mean, his OPS is under 100, so... Uh, that's that's not great. War of three. Um, he's fragile now. You know, he's 25. He still wants a fairly sizable deal, which we're not willing to give him. Well, we don't have any money to give him. Um, so yeah, that'll be Bulger. So we're going to have to be looking for a new leadoff man uh, as the free agency period approaches. Manny Minos is next. Solid batting average at 304, but he only walked 19 times all year in 142 games. That's uh, not great. <laughs> uh, struck out 80 times. So yeah, OPS plus of only a 95, despite hitting over 300. One guy who didn't have any issues walking <laughs> was Fred Mills. Uh, they walked him every chance they got the opposing team. 185 walks, led the league in walks for the second time in three years. Also led the league in on base percentage. Uh, he did hit 37 homers, which was up from last year and his biggest RBI output of the year. So Fred Mills had a pretty good season. Not as good as 2005, but still pretty darn good. Doug Reeder, he is our young kind of future here. He is going into arbitration, so we're going to have to pay him here, especially after this season. Um, in 113 games, he had just under 319 home runs, 83 RBI, uh, 130 OPS plus. So pretty solid at the dish there in that number four spot. Mike Pottle, again, another young guy, played pretty well in 125 games. He hit 294, 21 home runs, 73 RBI. Again, this 345 is our main source of offense. Uh, although Mike Cross wasn't too bad either, 71 home runs, 91 RBIs, played 153 games. That's pretty good. Didn't walk a ton. Well, 50 walks. Yeah, that's not a ton. Uh, OPS plus right around kind of league average. Troy Murray was our DH for a lot of the season. He played 140 games. I mean, he's not the prototypical power DH. I mean, he still got it down with 24 home runs. Um... OPS plus of 107. Not bad uh, for a bottom of the lineup guy. Uh, Scott McPherson is our day-to-day -day guy here uh, battling injury right now. He hit pretty good. I mean, his batting average-wise, his highest in the last three years. Um, you know, he's right around six home runs, 53 RBI, not too bad. Um, 
you know, be, we're not a guy we're expecting to do much at the plate, like we've been saying, but uh, not a bad season. And then Peyton Laviolette, our newest addition. We signed him in the off season, 120 games, 246 average. I mean, we didn't get him for his bat. We did get him for his fielding. And I mean, those numbers, pretty good. Pretty darn good at uh, at the catcher position. So we'll see if he gets another uh, gold glove. Not sure, though. Uh, our bench, not too much to write home about. This Danny Oleg, he was actually decent at the dish in his uh his opportunities cooper blake yeah okay danny's debate on a bit of a hot streak so he's used from time to time uh our backup catcher he was awful this year and bobby alice not very good either okay let's get into the pitching we're down to a four-man rotation for this five game series and uh bruno Hemry, despite the record Seven and thirteen, uh, ERA of four seventy five. His overall is really starting to come down. I think he was sixty five to start the year. He is definitely regressing. I mean, it's something we kind of expected as a thirty six year old. What I'm a little worried about is he is locked up till two thousand nine, so we still have two more years left with Hamry. Um, that's not too bad, but uh, yeah, not definitely a downswing for pretty much everything uh, with his season. Although these numbers weren't too bad, but he did give up more uh, walks and hits than he usually does. Didn't strike out as many people. Yeah, he was just kind of not great. I mean, the lucky thing is, is he he's a warrior. I mean, he doesn't miss any games, so at least there's that. But yeah, that 7-13 record, not great. Jack Patterson was definitely the bright spot of the pitching rotation. Actually won the ERA crown with a ERA under 3, 20-win season. Uh, he was an excellent, excellent pitcher. We'll probably have the number one slot, I would guess, for next year. In fact, I'm considering actually starting him in game one of this one. Uh, we probably will start him in game one, actually. Uh, oh, actually, I'm going to have to give myself control again. I like to give myself control in the playoffs of these, just so we can actually do this so i'm gonna move patterson up to the number one spot so he'll get the start uh willie sanchez another guy that definitely saw some regression this year another guy locked up for a couple more years so kind of similar to henry although just a younger version of him he's not terrible i'm hoping maybe this was a bit of an off off uh, season but we'll see and uh, Tomachika Kasiachi with actually another, not bad. I mean, record-wise, 13-9, great, but he did have an ERA over five. Um, definitely down, numbers down from last year, but, you know, that's kind of number four, number five pitcher numbers, sort of. And the bullpen, quickly going through, Ron Lyons is pretty good, 30 saves. Um, not bad. Robert was pretty good in a setup role. Adno was good in a in a setup role. Matsumoto was the bit way down because he was off, you know, 96 saves. And uh, now he's kind of gone down to. He wants to be a closer. And I mean, Lions didn't really give us the closer numbers. So, you know what? It we may look at switching that back and maybe giving Matsumoto uh, the closing roll back, but we'll see. I mean, as of right, I mean, he's kind of... Yeah, we'll have to make some decisions during the playoffs here, but... Uh, Dan Eddy, he wasn't great. Fimbros was actually pretty good. He's actually seen some improvement because I think he was a 40-40 guy when he picked him up, so he actually had a really good season in the bullpen. And our long relievers, they were all right, but not great. So that's our team after the regular season. And again, we are in very, very tough against the Calgary Bone Pilers. Let's just take a look at this team because they are, um, well, they're absolutely stacked. They are absolutely stacked. Um, you know, biggest budget in the league, second biggest payroll. Uh, and their their team is... I mean, look at these guys. They got Gareth, Pete. He's an 80-80. Kavanaugh, 
Ludovic, he's our nemesis from a couple years ago when he played for Edmonton. Uh, he had another dump, big season, hit 48 home runs. Bill Toop, 77. I mean, look at these guys, 60, 60, 55. I mean, there is not a stinker in the bunch. The lowest rated guy is a 55. Um, <laughs> yeah, wow. And then their pitching is also very good. Bud Hodge looks like he's going to be a stud. Even he already kind of is. Uh, Jay Myung So, North Korean. Interesting. North Korean pitcher. He's pretty good, too. Ransom is solid. Maitland is solid. And then he, they've got... They don't, have much, they don't have much weakness. This is a very, very, very good team. I'm curious. Are they going to be good for a while? Looking at their salaries. Oh, yeah, they got their core locked up for a heck of a long time. So, yeah, they're going to be scary for a long time, Calgary. So we are going to absolutely have to play hero here. Um, And if you look here in our 15 games against Calgary, we were 3-12. and 12. Wow. So, yeah, that's uh, we are definitely David to their Goliath for sure. Uh, a couple of the other matchups, we've got Edmonton versus Regina. Edmonton, even though they're in the wildcard slot, Regina actually won their division, but Edmonton is the better team, so Edmonton probably favored in this series for sure. Uh, over in the East, we've got Cape Breton versus Fredericton. Fredericton definitely holds the edge. Cape Breton's first appearance in the CBL playoffs. Fredericton already up 1-0 in the series. And in the other series, we have Charlottetown. They finished 95 and 68 against the uh, Metropolitan Division winners and defending champion Windsor Whistlers. But Charlottetown is up 1 0 in that series after a 4 to 1 win. All right, that's enough setup. Let's jump into game one here. We will put Jack Patterson on the mound against Bud Hodge, who, yeah, like he had another pretty good season. Not an outstanding season, but I would say if there's any sort of weakness, it's maybe their pitching. Their pitching's just kind of like good. <laughs> Everything else is amazing, but we'll see. So let's uh, let's play ball here. As you can see, we are pretty much outmatched almost everywhere, uh, except Fred Mills. Are you saying Fred Mills has the edge over Lujovic, just overall wise, I guess, but. Uh, yeah, we do know from a couple years ago, Fred Mills was nowhere to be found in the playoffs and Edmonton beat us thanks to this guy. So Fred Mills looking to get his revenge on Ludovic and uh, we'll see what happens. So let's jump in game one as we head to Calgary for the first game of the series. So I will play runners in scoring position as we are up in the top of the first and we get nothing uh, they put runners on first and third here for Matt Moraine. We're going to pitch to him, the 1-1. One, one. Easily taken by Munoz, so we're good there. Let me just turn down the crowd noise a little bit here. Crowd volume, let's bring that down to about a 60, 60, there we go. A little bit quiet. All right. We are up. We get nothing. They have runners on first and second. And they are going to knock one into right field, but it is a quick throw home. Not quick enough, though. One nothing bone pilers. Okay, Kavanaugh's up. Wild pitch. Oh, no. Okay. Laviolet jumps on it. Okay. Full count now. Kavanaugh is out okay i thought he was i thought that was a walk but it's caught looking okay we have minos on second zapeta is up no outs here we go let's do it zapeta is going to knock one into the gap that will bring a run home and a double for our bench guy zapeta that is huge 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 we need that we need depth we need depth scoring Okay, Laviolette, bottom of the order guy. He's going to strike out for our first out. Back to the top of the order. Bulger, the 1-0. Huge play in right field by Kavanaugh, but that injures him. Ooh, that could be big in this series. 
And it looks like Daniel Nicholas, who was a definite downgrade, is going to pop in. Could be a break for us. McPherson strikes out. That'll do it. Remains 1-1. One, one. Okay, we got a runner on second with one out. And that's going to get knocked into center field. Runner is going to come home, and that's going to make it 2-1 to one. Calgary. Benuelos is also going to knock one into center field. The uh, runner holds at third. All right. Uh, we're going to try to pitch to contact, see if we can get a double play here. Oh, that didn't work. Another shot into center field. It's the third straight. That will score another run. You make it three to one, Bone Pilers. And there is a fourth shot into center field, but Bulger's got that one for the second out. And next is Jamie Boyd. He's going to ground out to Mills for the third out. Calgary gets two in the third. Make it three to one. Vancouver gets nothing in the top of the fourth. All right. Patterson in a little more trouble. He's up to 80 pitches. First and second with two outs. This one's going to get knocked into center field yet again. Oh, but that's an absolute bullet from Bulger. And he guns him out at home. What a play. That saves our bacon there. Okay, I think we may go to the bullpen here. And we're going to warm up. Uh, hmm. We're going to warm up Fimbras, and we're going to warm up Matsumoto as well. Okay, we had Zapata on third. He's having a heck of a game with one out for Laviolette. Full count. Ooh, and he's going to walk. So we got runners on first and third with an out for George Bulger. 3-1 pitch. Oh, do not hit into the double play. He hit into the double play. That hurts. That hurts. Okay. All right, Patterson's sitting on 85 pitches. I mean, he can still go. He's pitched okay. I'll give him another inning. Well, maybe not so much now. Uh, first and second with one out. They got Boyd coming up. And Pete. I'm going to bring Matsumoto in. We're going to sit down. Fimbras. Okay, the 1-0 pitch. That is knocked into right field as another hit. 13-4 to are the hits here. Calgary will be disappointed they only have three runs right now. We got to get through Pete. Oh, boy. Full count. That's, again, knocked into right field. That's going to score a couple. Five to one, Calgary. You know, we kind of expected that this was going to be the case. That is a home run. Matsumoto cropping the bed here in relief as he's quickly given up five runs and he's only thrown ten pitches. Great work. Um, Timbers is going to go right in. <laughs> with an 8-1. Okay, he gets out of it. Calgary with 16 hits through five innings. Not looking good as we get nothing in the sixth. They give it a runner on second with two outs. Luckily, we get out of that one. Not looking good. We're going to need one heck of a comeback here. We're going to get some cleanup guys in just to... This game's pretty much out of reach. Well, first and second with no outs for Munoz. Drop. Nope. <clears throat> we got we got to break through with a couple runs here. Zapata has been our bright spot here today. Two for two. Not that time, though. 2-2 two, two to Laviolette. He's going to strike out. So we got runners on first and second with no outs, and we can't get him any further than that. So we'll bring in Dan Eddy here to try to just clean up a mess. He pitches a clean seventh inning. We got McPherson on second. Fred Mills is up with just a little dribbler to the mound. That'll advance the runner. Doug Reeder steps up the 1-2 pitch. He's going to strike out. That's four strikeouts for Reeder today. And we got first and second with two outs. There's a walk. That's going to load the bases now. 
And Boyd is going to smack one into the gap for the 20th hit of the game for the Bone Pilers. What do you do against this team? They are too good. That's going to clear the bases. And it is 11 to 1. This game has gotten out of hand. We get nothing in the ninth. And we get absolutely crushed in game one uh, with an 11 to 1 loss against this team. They're just incredible. Uh, we don't do much. McPherson with a couple hits, Bulger with a hit, Cepeda with two. Nothing much. Um, yeah, Matsumoto, terrible. Patterson, yeah, five runs, four earned, 12 hits. Not a great outing for him. <clears throat> However, they do have... Ooh. So Bill Cavanaugh has torn his labrum and is gone for six weeks. And uh, I think I saw a second injury on their part. Bill Toop, he's day-to-day -day with back spasms. So, okay. Well, we're just going to try to uh, be a goldfish and forget about that game. That was uh, that was a rough one. That was a very rough one. Uh, as we check in on the other series, Edmonton draws first blood over Regina with a 4-1 win. Over in the East, it looks like Cape Breton has tied it up with a 6-3 win over Fredericton. And Charlottetown has put the defending champs on the brink with a 5-2 win to go up. 2-0 in their series, and it's going to shift back to Charlottetown. So Windsor's in a lot of trouble there. Okay, we need this one. It's Hemry versus the North Korean So here. As we're going to jump right in, see what we can do. So Calgary does have an injury, but I don't think it's going to matter too much. But we'll never know. We never know. Playoff baseball. Here we go. Top of the first. And Bulger's already on second. Looks like he may have stolen a base. McPherson's going to walk. It's going to put runners on first and second for Fred Mills. He needs to do something in the playoffs. Drop. Oh, what a catch by Toop. All right. So that's going to put runners on the corners with one out. Here is Reader. That is going to load the bases for the Mounties here in game two. Can we get off to a good start? Here is Mike Pottle with the bases loaded with one out. And we're going to get a decision here. We're going to call him in, and we do get in, so that makes it one nothing for the Mounties. Mike Cross steps up. Little dribbler. That should end the inning. <clears throat> Could have got a lot more, but all we get is one in the top of the first. Emery pitches a good inning. We get nothing. They got a runner on second with two outs here in the bottom of the second. And Pottle makes the catch. Keeps it to one nothing. Okay, we got Mills on second with two out for Doug Reeder. We're really hoping to steal a game here, but I don't know. We are up one nothing. Okay, runner on second with two outs for Pete. And he's going to ground out to Mills, it looks like. Okay. Their, uh, their, their hitting has seemed to have disappeared, at least through three innings anyway. We get nothing. They get nothing. We get nothing. Okay, they've got a runner on second here with no outs. Hinton is up. Wow. Wow. Hot shot to McPherson, who gobbles it up for the first out. The one-two pitch to Boyd. He strikes out. And Henry Lomond, the two-two pitch, grounded straight to Hemry for the out. And the score remains 1-0 Vancouver. A stark change from game one. All right, top of the sixth. We get absolutely nothing. Hemry continuing to cruise it at a clean sixth inning. All right, Cross is on second. They're actually bringing in Martin Ransom, who I believe is a starter. I thought he was scheduled to go in game three, but interesting move by Calgary. So runner on second. Oh, Munoz makes him pay. Deep shot into right field. That will score another run. 
And the Mounties go up 2-0. The Calgary crowd appears to be shocked here. Zapata stepping up. He's going to walk. Which will bring up Peyton Laviolette, who doesn't have a hit this series. I'm considering... A substitution here. L rather late in the game. See if we can get someone like... I'm going to bring in Danny, who's been hitting pretty well. See what he can do here. The 1-0. That is not what you want your pinch hitter to do. But only one out. Okay. Here's Bulger, the 0-1. Drop, 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 drop. Does not gonna, it's not gonna drop. Alright, Vancouver gets one. We're going to make the defensive change as Charles Rogers will slot in and play catcher. All right, Henry at 95 pitches. It may be time to start warming up someone here. Okay, 103. Oh, why did Cad know? Do I have uh, them calling their own shot? I don't think I had him warming up. But anyway, you know what? He's ready to go, so maybe the AI is doing that for me. All right, the 2-2. Two, two. Big at bat here. That's going to be a ground out to Mills. Woo, we love it. It's 2 nothing here as we head to the 8th. And we get an RBI double, it looks like, from Reader to make it 3 to nothing. Mike Pottle stepping up the 2-1 pitch. He's going to knock one into center field over the center fielder's head. And the Bone Pilers are stunned here in game two as Vancouver goes up four to nothing. Just a completely different game. That's into right field for left field for Cross to score another run. Five nothing Mounties. Here's Munoz. Oh, that's not going to get anywhere. The Peta steps up, the 1 2 pitch. He will strike out. That makes it 5 0. Adno pitches a good inning. We'll have Robert on the ready here in the bottom of the ninth. And just in case, we're going to warm up Lions. All right, that should be the second out. And Vancouver is one out away from stealing one here in Calgary. Although it might not be over yet. Oh, it is. Just kidding. Bulger makes the catch, and it is a 5 nothing shared shutout victory for the Mounties. I don't think a lot of people saw that coming. They thought maybe Vancouver would steal a game at home, but no. Vancouver walks into Calgary with a 112 win season and they steal game two, which will even the series heading back to the West Coast. So Calgary, they had 20 hits and 11 runs in game one, six hits and no runs in game two. <laughs> wow. Emery pitched an absolute gem. Maybe I should have had him starting game one. So the vet picks six and two thirds, four hits, three strikeouts, one walk. Uh, Cadno pitches a great hold, and then Robert finishes him off. Textbook. Wow, thirty-four degrees. It is cold out there. I guess it is uh, October in uh, in Calgary, so it is a little bit late in the in the year. So it's a little bit chilly for baseball, but hey, Canadian Baseball League. That's what happens. Okay, we tie it up going back home. It, the Mounties have hope here. The Mounties have some hope. All right. So, we head to game three, and uh, it's going to be Dave Kempton on the mound Dave Witty Campton on the mound for 
Oh, I thought that was our never mind. Uh, for the Bone Pilers, nine and two record, two point seven zero ERA. So this is going to be tough. Number thirty five prospect as well. So good young talent. And Willie Sanchez is going to go for us. Let's see if we can steal another one here. Checking in on the other series. It looks like Regina ties this one up. 6-2 to two win over Edmonton. That ties the series as it heads back to Edmonton. Cape Breton looking to pull off a bit of an upset as they win game three and go up 8-4 to four over Fredericton. And Windsor stays alive. Road team has won every game in this series as they defeat Charlottetown 4-1. Okay, here we go. Game three. We're back in Vancouver. Um, I was wondering why the AI was... Eh, whatever. Whatever. All right, here we go. Game number three. Okay, so, ooh, not a good start, as it is already one nothing with two outs. That is a deep ball. Oh, just gets over his head. And already, before many people have even sat down, it's 3 nothing Calgary. We get nothing in the first. They get nothing in the second. We get nothing in the second. They get another solo home run from Pete. That is 4 nothing, and they're continuing to threaten here. Oh, this is getting away from us early. We can't give up any more runs here. It's already 4 nothing. Make the play, make the play, make the play. We make the play. 4 nothing Calgary. And we're still looking for our first hit. Sanchez. <laughs> We may be looking at making an early change here. I am not liking where this is going. I am not liking where this is going. Oh, uh, boy. Sanchez is getting roughed up here in game three. Getting roughed up. Five nothing. Wow. Like they just took a game off and now they're back to their usual self here. First and third, still no outs. They're trying to steal. Gunned out, though. At least we get one out there. And looks like this is a four-pitch walk. Ludovic. And he's going to make us pay again. Wow. Calgary is just dominating vancouver on their home turf here six nothing vancouver without a hit that is going to be it for willie sanchez burho is going to come in try to change the fortune a bit here and he starts with a strikeout at least and then he throws a wild pitch to make it seven nothing and mercifully that'll do it Seven nothing bone pilers. We finally get a hit. Mills is on second. Reader's gonna pop out. Nothing doing there. We'll count to Pottle, and he's gonna ground out. Seven nothing through four here. Burho pitches a decent inning at least. We may have to burn through some of these relievers here. Okay, runner on second with two outs for Laviolette. Round the third, easily taken care of. Still 7-0, we only have one hit. Yeah, okay, you're getting... Weird how they're warming, usually... Eh, whatever. Okay, Riley's gonna come in. I'm okay with them making sure I, I'm okay. Okay, we get nothing in the sixth. Runner on second with one out for Fred Mills. Full count. He's going to ground out. Fred Mills continuing to struggle. Well, actually, no, he is hitting 333, but. All right, 2 1 to Reader. And we can't even get one over the plate. Only two hits through six innings. 
Okay, they have a runner on first. Looks like that's handled, but runner advances to second. Here is Stead, and he will fly out. Okay, a little bit of threatening here. Runners on first and second with no outs. And here's Troy Murray, who's going to walk and load the bases now with no outs. And here's McPherson. He's going to strike out. Here's Laviolette, the 2-0. And that is a deep fly ball. We're going to try to send him home. And wow, even the Calgary defense is there. And uh, guns them out. We get nothing in the seventh, despite loading the friggin' bases. Wow. All right, we're going to bring Eddie in. This looks to be out of reach here. All right. Bottom of the eighth. Again, first and second with no outs. Fred Mills, do something. Nope. Striking out doesn't count as doing something. There's another strikeout. Pottle, the 1-1. One, one. He's going to knock one into center field, finally. And I think that will score a run for Vancouver. That's going to make it 7-1. to one. Might cross, little blooper, but it should be handled. Vancouver gets one in the eighth. Clearly not enough, though. They get another home run. Then they walk. Then Hinton's going to knock one in. Been a rough one here. Been a rough one. Finally. All right. Nine to one. Vancouver looking to get this game over with. Well, maybe not yet. McPherson, full count. Advances the runner, but there's the first out. Laviolette. The one two pitch, he's gonna strike out. And the 0 2 to Bulger. And oh, that's going to actually drop for a two out bottom of the ninth triple, <laughs> but it's nine to two. All right. Munoz, the one two pitch, and that will do it. Vancouver gets crushed on their home field. 9 to 2, 15 hits for Calgary. Uh, yeah, this one was over pretty early on, and we just couldn't get anything going. Uh, poor performance from Sanchez, unfortunately. I mean, what do you expect? So Calgary puts Vancouver on the brink of defeat as we get ready to head into game number four. Checking in on the other series, Edmonton... 9-8 win over Regina at home. That puts them up 2-1. to one, Chance to bring them home. And in the East, a couple interesting developments as Fredericton comes back again with another road victory. 12-4. to four. That will send that one to Game 5. And the Charlottetown-Windsor series is going to Game 5 as Windsor with a couple big wins as well. So... Uh, our series is probably the most lopsided, as uh, pretty much all three games have been lopsided for either team. Um, okay, it is what it is. Who knows what we're going to get in game four. Pete Maitland's going to step up against Tomochiko Kasiashi. Vancouver trying to stay alive here. Let's jump right in. Hopefully we get a bit better response than we did in game three. All right, Calgary gets nothing in the first, and we get a home run from Fred Mills, the first of the playoffs for him. That makes it one nothing. Mounties, bottom of the second. Pottle is on second with one out for Troy Murray. 3-2, he's going to strike out. Here's McPherson, the 0-2. He goes down swinging. All right, so Kasiashi, another good inning there. Bulger is now on second with one out in the bottom of the third. Here's Munoz, the 1-1 one, one pitch. Oh, I thought that was going to jade over his head, but it did not. Okay, here's Mills again. Already has the home run. Not that time. Top of the fourth. Asiashi pitching a gem right now. 
Nothing for them. Runner on second with two outs for Boyd. He's going to ground out to Munoz. And we've got... It just seems to go back and forth between uh, pitching gem and then absolute clobbering here. It is one nothing head in the bottom of the fifth. Troy Murray gets on second with no outs. Here's McPherson. He's going to ground out, but it will send Murray to third. Laviolette steps up. And that should bring home the runner. It will sack fly to make it 2 nothing Mounties. Okay, Kasiashi. Uh-oh. Laman gets to third. And we got to throw to Pete, who is dangerous. Although he will fly out, but that looks deep enough. Oh, Bulger throws up. Oh, we got him. Bulger throwing an absolute laser beam to home plate. Wow. It's plays like that that make me want to keep him, but he does have that 80 arm out in center field that uh, just absolutely lasered him out there. Okay, Cassie, she's still in trouble here in the top of the six. Runners on the corners for Moraine. The 2-2 pitch, that is going to get knocked into... Oh, no! Right field, and then bobbled by Pottle. Ugh, okay. So that's second and third with two outs. We got to get out of this. Please make that play. All right, we do. Woo! All right, two to one. Um, I think we may warm up Robert. Do we bring him in? I'm going to rely on the starting pitching. Oh, bad idea. Bad triples, so Robert is going to come in. See if he can get us out of this. Uh, use that arm again. There's that bullet arm. Did he get him again? He got him again! Bulger with two putouts, literally saving our season right now. <laughs> we talked about him maybe not coming back, but oh my word, that arm is saving our bacon right now. He's literally saving our entire season. Okay, we get nothing in the seventh. They get nothing in the eighth. And uh, Lions is going to come in. And he close the deal here. We're going to go pitcher by, er, pitch by pitch here. Or batter by batter, I should say. All right. Oh, Mills with the error. That is the third Vancouver error of the day. Putting a runner on first. A little bunt. That'll advance the runner. All right, here's Stead. Two for three today. He's going to walk. Runner on second and third with one out for Hinton. The 2-2 two -two pitch. Big, big strikeout for Lions. And here's Jamie Boyd. And that is going to be grounded out to Munoz and Vancouver somehow... Some way, thanks to George Bulger, is going to force a game five against this powerhouse Calgary Bone Piler team. I mean, those putouts there were unbelievable. I don't know how he didn't get player of the game, but Cassie Ashley did pitch a gym. And uh, yeah, Bulger just absolutely saves our bacon. Uh, Bulger, two outfield assists. Unbelievable. <laughs> And we pulled five double plays, too. That helped. So um, our fielding, despite making three errors, somehow gets through. And we're forcing a game five in Calgary. Did not expect this to happen. But here we go. Whew. And uh, Patterson's going to be back on the mound. I'm kind of wondering, just based on... How well Emery pitched game two. He is ready to go. I think we give Hemry the nod. Just based on how he played. Uh, he deserves it. He's the vet. 
He's always been our number one guy. He was our very first pit or first pitcher pick in the inaugural draft. We we owe it to him. He he, he showed us. He deserved it. So we're gonna give him the ball in game five. As we check in on the other series, and uh, they are all done. And uh, wow. So Edmonton, that was the only one that didn't go five games. Edmonton takes down Regina in four, and they will be waiting the winner of Vancouver-Calgary. Cape Breton pulls it off after Fredericton was charging, but that's a bit of an upset as the Atlantic Division champs go down Cape Breton moving on, and this one is the big shocker. Windsor, the defending champs, come back and take all three games. They fight back from a 2-0 deficit to take it 3-2. So it will be Cape Breton versus Windsor in the Eastern League final. And uh, we're all waiting on this pivotal game five. I did not think this would go five games. I thought this would most likely be an easy sweep. Um, but hey, what do I know? Here we go. Game number five. Emery on the mound against Bud Hodge, who just obliterated us in game five. Who knows what we're going to get? We've had... Our games have been tight, our wins fairly tight, and their games, their wins have been absolute blowouts. I don't know what we're going to get here. Okay, here we go. Top half, we got runners on first and second with one out. And here is Doug Reeder. And unfortunately, he will, well, only one out there. Ottle has a chance to bring a run in, 2-1. And he's going to knock one down. Yes, Vancouver will score. And it is one nothing. Like cross full counts. Nope, not gonna get anything there. Okay, but Vancouver draws first blood. Ooh, Hamry in a bit of trouble here. First and second with one out. That's hit to Bulger, the hero of game four, keeping us in it. He gets the second out. And Hamry striking out. Uh, I don't know who that was. I can't remember. Uh, wait, oh, Moraine for the third out. So remains one nothing. We get a home run from a very unexpected source. Laviolette, was that his first hit of the series? It might have been. Um, wow. But he gets a home run, and it is uh, two nothing. Way to come alive when we need you. Okay, nothing from Hemry. We get nothing. They are threatening first and second with a very dangerous hitter here. Pete stepping up. All right, he flies out to Bulger for the first out. Here is Ludovic, who's been, I want to say quiet this series, but we know what he's capable of. Oh, but he strikes out. Hemry gets him. And it is two. And he's going to ground out. We saw through the heart of the order there as Calgary goes down. All right, we get nothing in the fourth. Ooh, Henry does give up a solo shot to Steed. That's all, though. Okay, we got runners on first and second. Come on, Mills. We need something from you. A walk works. Full count. Doug Reeder. One, two. He's going to knock one into right field. Doug Reeder, that's going to bring home three runs. Three run double for Reeder makes it 5-1 Vancouver. And if you can hear a hush over the crowd here in Calgary. As it is 5-1 here in game five. Vancouver hoping to pull off the massive upset. Bottle strikes out to end the inning, but three runs for Vancouver makes it 5-1. Emery pitching well as he gets through the fifth. We get nothing in the sixth. Emery pitches a strong sixth. Oh, my word. What a great name, Willard Quirk. We are going to <coughs> go to the bullpen just in case. 
Okay, we get nothing. I'm going to give Hamry another inning here. Hmm, huge inning there. Huge, huge inning. Top of the eighth, we get nothing. Do I let him have it again? Oh, ho, ho, ho. Hamry absolutely dominating. We're going to put in Lions to finish him off. Oh, no. Ludovic hits a home run to start the uh, inning. But that's it! Calgary can't get any more! And Vancouver absolutely stuns the Calgary Bone Pilers. 112 wins gone in the first freaking round. Unbelievable. I can't believe it. I didn't think we'd have a chance in this series. But it's playoff baseball. Who knows what could happen? Wow. Emery and like just unbelievable. Unbelievable player of the game. He pitches two absolute stunning games for us. Game two and game five. Bulger literally keeps us in the series in game four with his putouts. And we somehow come back and nip Calgary. Unbelievable. I, I can't believe it. I cannot believe it. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. What an upset. What an upset as Vancouver moves on. I didn't think, like I said, we had a chance. But Vancouver's into the East Western League Championship, and we face the team that knocked us out of the 2005 playoffs, the very strong Edmonton Mercuries. However, this series on paper looks a lot closer than the Calgary series did. did. We actually have the slight edge, 8-7 in terms of 15 game, sorry, in terms of wins over 15 games. During the regular season, only two wins separates us in the regular season. So this is going to be... Uh, on paper, looks like a pretty close series. And uh, over in the East, Cape Breton and Windsor, identical records. Uh, so that'll be an interesting game as or an interesting series as well. But you know what? We're going to cut the video here and uh, we will play the second round um, in our next video. So hopefully you enjoyed that upset. That was a lot of fun to watch. So Vancouver moves on. Calgary's gone. I love it. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you next time.